Today we're going to talk about measures of position in a set of scores or in a distribution of scores. And the three measures of position that we'll be talking about are the percentile rank, the quartiles, and the interquartile range. A percentile rank tells you what percentage of the class or what percentage of a group of scores a given number exceeds. So for example, a percentile rank, if you took a test and someone told you you were at the 95th percentile, that means that you are scoring better than 95% of the people who took that test. If you're at the 40th percentile, you're scoring better than 40% of the people who took that test. So again, the percentile rank is telling you the proportion of people in a group that scores below a certain score. The formula for computing a percentile rank percentile is to take the number of scores below the number you're interested in and divide that by the total number of scores. Here is a class with 29 students in it. Here are the scores on a test ranging from 40 to 98. Here is the frequency of each score. We have 191, two people scored 85, three people scored 65, and this is the cumulative frequency. As we go from the lowest score to the highest score, we keep adding how many scores are at that point. So at this point, we have one person or one score. When we move to 41, we add another one. Now we have two people at 41 and below. When we move to 46, we have two more people to add, so now our total is four. And at the score of 46, we have four people and below, and so on. And we keep adding until we get to 29, which is the number of scores in this class. So let's say that we wanted to determine the percentile rank of someone who scored a 91. What the formula tells us to do is to count the number of scores below 91 and then divide that by the total number of scores. So below 91, there are 26 scores. And if we divide that by the total number of scores, which is 29, we will get a percentile rank of 89.7. And what that means is that someone who scores a 91 is doing better than 89.7% of that group. Let us use another example. and Let's say we wanted to compute the percentile rank of someone who scored a 72. Below 72, there are 17 scores. 17 people scored below 72. And we divide that by the total number of scores that we have which is 29, and you would get a percentile rank of 58.6. So someone who scores 72 is doing better than 58.6% of the other people who took that test. And that's then how you compute a percentile rank. Another measure of position is the quartile. Quartiles divide a distribution of scores into four points, basically four equal points or intervals of scores. And we have four quartiles. We have Q1, Q2, Q3, and Q4. Q1 is the 25th percentile and below. Q2 is a score at the 50th percentile and below. Q3 is the 75th percentile, and Q4 is the 99th percentile, which we don't often see scores at the fourth quartile. So often you're asked to determine, well, in a set of scores, which of these represents the first quartile? Which of these represents the second, the third quartile? And to determine a quartile, we use a different formula. We say 
To determine what score is at the first quartile, take the number of scores in your set, let's call it capital N, add to it 1, and multiply it by a quarter, or 0.25. So in this case, our number of scores is 29. We add to it one score, which gives us 30. And then we multiply that by 0.25. And what we get is 7.5. What this 7.5 means, and we'll always round up these numbers, so we'll round this up to 8, that the first quartile is the eighth score from the bottom. The eighth score from the bottom, we have one score, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The eighth score from the bottom is a score of 55. So 55 is the first quartile. To get our second quartile, we take n plus 1, and we multiply it times 50. The second quartile is also the same as the median. In this case, we would multiply 30 times 0.5, and we would have the 15th score from the bottom is the second quartile. So we have 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Our median, or second quartile, is a score of 65. And then finally, to get our third quartile, we take n plus 1, and we multiply it times 0.75, three quarters of the way up. And that would give us 30 times 0.75, which would give us a number of 22.5. And we'll round that up to 23. The 23rd score from the bottom is Q3. And the 23rd score from the bottom, we just go up the cumulative frequency column, is a score of 84. And this represents Q3. So from scores of 55 to 40 is Q1. Q2 rep is represented by scores 65 to 55, to 55. Q3, 84 to 65. And the fourth quartile are the numbers above 84. The important thing to remember here is that when you use this formula, this number that you get is the position of the score, but not the score itself. It's the eighth score, not a score of eight. And the eighth score is 55. The 15th score is 65. The 23rd score from the bottom is 84. And that's how we determine what the quartiles are. Finally, there's one other measure of position which we'll be talking about and which is talked about in Chapter 3. And that's called the interquartile range. The interquartile range is the scores between the third quartile and the first quartile. So the interquartile range, which we can abbreviate as IQR, equals Q3 minus Q1. Q3, in this case, is a score of 84. Q1 is a score of 55. So the interquartile range is 29 scores wide between the score of 84 and the score of 55, there are 29 scores, 29 possible scores. So the middle 50% of our set of scores has, is 29 scores wide. And that is another way of saying that the interquartile range covers scores from 55 to 84. That's our discussion then today of measures of relative position.